Hi yo, hi yo, welcome back, welcome back. So today I wanted to go over hot water tanks for your RV. The reason I wanted to go over that is because it's been really difficult to actually find a video or something to tell you exactly how these things work. So today we're gonna to go over how these things work from the electrical side all the way to the propane side and the tank itself, and how does it get the hot water into your RV. So hang in there and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started talking about this hot water tank. First, I wanted to start off by talking about what type of hot water tank I have or the manufacturer. The manufacturer of ours is actually Suburban. It's a six gallon hot water tank with 16 gallon reserve. What does that reserve mean? The reserve is because I have electric and propane and I can run both of mine at the same time, which will give me about 16 gallons of hot water before the water goes completely cold on me. So let's get into talking about the different types of systems that I have from the electric to the propane. And then from there, we'll go into talking about how does the tank work? Where does it store the water? And then we'll go into talking about how the tank actually works. All right, first for the electrical side, behind this little box right here is a heating element, kind of like the ones that you have in your residential homes and stuff like that. There's a metal rod that goes in there that's hooked up to the electrical side, the 110, the part of the camper that you hook up to the posts and stuff like that for your 30 amp and 50 amp services. That powers this heating element right here so that you get electrical power going through the heating element. The heating element actually heats up and because it's in the water itself, it heats the water. The way that you turn that on and off is by the switch right up under here. This switch turns on the heating element, allows power to get to it so that it heats up and gets the water hot. Now there's a safety measure there that you need to make sure that you do. When you go to a campground, before you hook up your electric, make sure you have this switch off. The reason for that is because if you have it on and you hook up your power and you don't have any water running through yet, or your tank doesn't have any water in it, the heating element will try to turn on and when it does, the heating element can burn up and it won't be any good to you anymore. All right, for the propane side, the propane actually comes from the tanks on the front of my RV, snakes in and comes in and connects right here. Goes through a solenoid, comes through this tube, mixes with oxygen, comes over here, there's a spark igniter inside. When that igniter turns on, it lights the flame and the flame is up under the belly of the tank that's holding the water. And in turn, it heats up the water inside of it. Now you can kind of see how the propane can come in, heat the underbelly of that tank and heat up the water. And the electric can have the element turned on and it's also heating the water. And that's how we get the reserve. Now that's kind of the basics of how this works. Let's kind of dig in a little bit and talk about each of the individual parts and how the individual parts come into play with making hot water for your RV. All right, we'll start off first with this piece right here. This piece is the electric solenoid. It actually runs off of 12 volts that is supplied by the power from your 12 volt battery. The solenoid will detect when it's time to turn on by a switch that's inside of the RV. When it detects that it's time to actually turn on, It'll go through a little self-check to make sure everything's okay and purge out all the air out of the system. A little valve inside of the solenoid will actually open up and allow propane to come through. It will exit this tube right here and mix with oxygen through this little window right here. As it travels down the rest of the tube, as we said before, the igniter will ignite the tip of it and allowing a flame to shoot out of it so that it heats up the underbelly of the tank. It's not that difficult if you actually think about it. Now the manufacturer does set the temperature on this. So there is a thermostat on the inside that tells it what temperature the water has gotten to. When it gets to a specific temperature, it will actually turn itself off. The flame will quit. And when the water cools down or you start consuming it, it'll know that the temperature has dropped 
and it will reignite and turn itself back on again and it just keeps going through that cycle over and over and over while it's using up your propane. Now for the electrical side of it, electrical power comes in from the post that you're plugged into and comes through this switch right here. You turn the switch on and it will turn on electricity to the heating elements. Now the heating elements are slid inside of the tank and the water surrounds the heating element. The electrical heating element heats up and because it's inside the water itself, it'll actually heat the water around it and providing hot water to your RV. Now we come up here and we go to these buttons up here. These are reset buttons or safety reset buttons. If it thinks that there's an issue with the heating element or the propane or anything like that, these will trigger and cut the system off. Now you can go and push on them and it'll reset the system and you can restart the system and hopefully everything will come back and be safe. But if it does, you really need to go in and make sure that you check everything to make sure that everything's okay with your RV. Now this part up here, this is a pressure relief device. The pressure relief device is there for just that very reason. If the tank itself over pressurizes, this thing will open up right here and allow all that excess of pressure to come out of the tank. It's kind of a safety device, if you will. All right, up underneath you have this here, which is the igniter, and it detects whether or not the flame is on. It'll come in and send a little electrical spark in there to ignite the tip of the flame, and it also detects whether or not the flame is actually there and present. That way, if the flame is told to lit and it does not and it doesn't detect it, then it's gonna turn the system back off, yet another safety feature. So this big box right here, it may look like a lot, but it actually does one job and one really small job, but very important. What happens is the propane comes through and heats up the underbelly of that tank, but all those fumes and stuff need somewhere to exhaust. So what happens is the flame comes in there and because heat rises, the heat will come up and vent out the top up here. Behind this is nothing more than just a little metal plate so that the fumes can come in, heat up the tank from the flame, and then the excess of fumes and gases and stuff like that will exhaust the top because of the hot air that rises. Down up underneath is this plug. The plug serves for two different things. One is a drain. You can open up the plug, take it out, drain out your hot water tank, flush it, clean it, anything that you need to do like that, especially when you're winterizing. That's a lot of times when we take ours out. Another reason that ours has this plug here, and not all hot water tanks do, but ours does, when I take out the drain plug, there's an actual anode rod on the end of it. What this anode rod actually does is it takes all the chemicals and binds it to itself and deteriorates it so that it doesn't create rust inside of your tank. So now that we've gone through the hot water tank itself, I hope the information was very helpful to you. I know it doesn't seem like a lot talking about it on the video, and looking at it, it looks like a really busy deal, right? But once you know how your hot water tank actually works and what all the stuff does, then it's really not all that difficult at all. Now let's go ahead and wrap up the video. Once again, if you haven't subscribed already, please click on the subscribe button and click the little bell so that you get another video the next time that we have one come out. Also click on the thumbs up and leave me a comment so that I know how I'm doing on my videos. And if you have any other suggestions or any other kind of things about tanks itself, let us know down in the comments below. I would love to know. So as always, until the next time, keep it safe, enjoy your hot water, and God bless. Thank you.